Kenya lost over 29.5 billion shillings to cybercrime in 2018. Police say the suspects have siphoned billions of shillings from local banks. Our challenge number one is the misuse and abuse of social media. When your account is hacked and things that you do not even subscribe to are posted there, it, it, it tarnishes who you are, it messes up with your whole thing. We take hacking as maybe a very serious gentleman sit at somewhere in a computer trying to pull down the system. It's not like that. As technology advances, people across the world are relying on internet to store sensitive information. However, cyber insecurity have become a threat to people across the world. In the 1970s, the computers were learning to talk to each other. It was indeed the early days of internet designed to make work easier and to pass information in an easier way. It was a step towards a bright future with infinite possibilities. Technology brought everything all together in one gadget. So there is Google. You can, you can actually get any information anywhere you are. It has made communication easier. Today, you can drive a bank, shop, connect with family and friends, and even run your home from wherever you are, thanks to technology. However, all these conveniences bring with them a dark side, with many people learning to connect through social media and relying on the platforms to store their data. This makes them vulnerable to cyber attacks. There is a one weak point that uh, attackers have realized that uh, if they, they try to exploit human weakness. They can always gain access into systems. We have indeed digitalized ourselves so much and opened up our information records to the outside world, leading to modern entrepreneurs where criminals can steal your information, sell it, and make money. Well, uh, there are so many motivations for hacking, but majority is for gaining of cash, or maybe trying to deny services to legitimate users. A report published in 2016 by Cybersecurity Ventures predicted that global damages incurred from cybercrime would cost up to $6 trillion annually by the year 2021 and $10.5 trillion annually by 2025. Today, hackers attack people worldwide roughly every half a minute. This translates to a cybercrime being committed on average of 2,244 times per day. Having my phone or my laptop would, uh, would stop me from having personal time. You know, in our generation, we have a lot of noise around us. You don't even get to have personal time and reflect on uh, what you have been doing, where you are at the moment, where you are headed. It's also knowing what you are doing all the time, everywhere. You know, and most of the Kenyans, we are already vulnerable. Looking into your phone today, you are exposed. Why? How many messages do we receive from the people we do not know? From, 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 you know, uh, I cannot mention, but you understand. You know, today, you give your phone to one person, or your phone belongs to one company. But you come to realize that various messages flock into your phone, and then you wonder who registered you into these systems, or so forth. We are already vulnerable. Everybody is not getting into social media. And if we cannot manage to handle how data is uh, being spread through the social media, it will harm us. Because you, ha you must limit yourself up on the amount of data you consume per day. I always say, if you cannot protect it, don't collect it. Cybercrime is quite a complex topic of a discussion. To understand, we must break down to several types of cyber crimes. In today's digital world, people are trading convenience for privacy, which means they are sharing more and more information about themselves. This autopilot is what criminals and hackers are effortlessly turning into hundreds of millions of dollars every year from people like you and me or around the world. There are many types of cyber crimes affecting businesses and individuals. The most common ones include phishing scams, website spoofing, ransomware, malware and hacking. The, the, the internet has just made life simple. People are able to work from home. People are able to communicate from one point to another in the world. 
So you find that people have a lot of data that is uh, stored in these online platforms, call it Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and other existing social media platforms. I do upload lifestyle blogs and health ones about health. So one day I was trying to upload one, but my account wasn't logging in. I had been logged out. I tried to, you see there you reach out but nothing was happening, yeah, I couldn't guess it anyway. COVID-19 has surely shined an uncomfortably bright light on the state of cyber security around the world. As early as March 2020, Deloitte discovered an influx of cyber criminals. You know, the power in social media is underrated. So the future to me seems um, not pleasing at all it seems at stake yeah. our youth are at stake because social media has a lot of power than what we think mm -hmm. you know we get to connect with people yes but uh, for me social media and cyberbullying is something that if not uh, worked on will create a big problem because we are having people studying masters phds degrees diplomas but they can't even handle cyberbullying because they are still human yeah. someone has a lot of knowledge but they, are, they go to waste because they are distracted by cyberbullying we are already exposed you know paul we are so much exposed that we cannot even hide ourselves that's why you will find out that even some of uh, you know if not maybe the young the young generation knows but older ones you know they find themselves they have subscribed to some matters they do not understand and the money is getting off their 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 their, their, their phones their airtime and so forth and so on because they have put you know they have put a system that if you do something and you by mistake you do something you have already gotten into uh, that is now one of that is that is white collar hacking you know whereby they put something that you think is genuine but it is something that is not genuine the moment you just enter details into that pop up the pop up will just disappear and from there nothing will look suspicious until Probably you realize later that your account had been compromised. In fact, they tell you it's free. So when you and then when you subscribe into it, you get into that trouble. Ooh, aha! Free is always the right price. There's no such thing as a free stream. We have your data locked. Wire one thousand dollars in Bitcoin in the next ten minutes, or we'll delete your data. I just tried to get some people who could help me, but unfortunately, it couldn't happen because even the word you see the way it, you have a name, it was changed, so I couldn't get it at all. I tried to see if even the blogs were there. Yes, they were there, but I couldn't get them. So I try. Someone advised me to start a new one of which it have never picked that way. Yeah, the views are, the, aren't, are not that much. Yeah. Someone comes here, yeah, someone comes just around the environment, drops a flash disk, and then because of that curiosity, once you walk around and you find a flash disk, you are likely to plug it into your machine and see what is inside there. So there are malwares that uh, once you plug a flash disk, they just activate themselves and they are able to copy themselves into the machine and be able to navigate. It is a booming enterprise that takes place in borderless realm of cyberspace with only a few online users aware of what's happening under the hoodies. Limit yourself in how, you, how much you consume data and that is quite challenging in this generation because we get information from all sources from, from media to music to our televisions to radio and this is uh, it's quite challenging because you you cannot you cannot survive you 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 also you, you need space to process so if if you just get if you just been getting information you just get information and you don't have time to process that is that becomes uh, challenging so with me i have this particular page for instagram it looks very normal but it's it's hard to detect that this is not the real login page for Instagram. It's just a clone that is cloned by someone to manipulate someone's mind to think that it is Instagram and enter their data, 
for it for the data to be forwarded somewhere else but not instagram to verify and authenticate for for login so i am just going to send this app uh not app the link into your phone then uh you are going just to log in and by logging in immediately you just submit your details i'll have them from my phone yeah so just a minute Yeah, there we go. I have uh, I have the app already. It's saying free Netflix app. So I'm going to open it. The WhatsApp will try to warn you mm -hmm. that uh, you are trying to install an app that is not uh, verified by the Google Play Store. Okay. But since you want the free Netflix, you are likely to go ahead and install the mm -hmm. the application. Yeah. So until after you install the application, mm -hmm. I should be able to. Mm -hmm. See that you install the application mm -hmm. and like this way. So, what has happened to your screen? Nothing. Uh, nothing. My screen has gone. But. Uh, would you believe it if I tell you that I already have the username that you've entered and the password? I've never seen what you entered into your into your into the login form as username. But from my hand, mm -hmm. I can be able to see that you entered zero seven sixty eight. A six eight zero two something ending with ninety three, yeah. and password is Paul okay. from this end, the one that uh, I am highlighting. Yeah, that is what. So from there, I can be able now to go to the real Instagram, and uh, try to to log into your account yes. and manipulate whatever I wanted to, the intent that I had to send you that particular phishing link. So this is my account. I can be able to. I just log out and try to log in into your account by entering your details yeah and from there maybe if you are you are a celebrity i can try to threaten you mm -hmm. do this and that and that or maybe pay me some good cash of money oh, because maybe you are a celebrity okay. you have uh, almost many followers a, 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 i have a million followers so yeah. you wouldn't like that account to to go away so you are likely to to spend uh, like even twenty thousand mm -hmm. to get your account back from the demonstration, no one is spared the vulnerability of being on the data statistics updated every second. People are under depression because of, uh, of uh, technological issues. For example, when someone says they were cyberbullied or uh, the head speech was said about them maybe on Kenyans on Twitter, then it gets to them and to their mentality and they, they really want to end it all. So on the negative side, I would say technology has influenced how we live in a negative way yeah. and there is actually no turning back because technology is growing every, every other day. A report by Seriano, a pan-African-based cybersecurity consulting firm, showed that Kenyan economy lost more than 29.5 billion shillings from cyber attacks in the year 2018. It was serious as of the first quarter of 2019, cyber threats had rose by 10%. In the period of 2018-2019, the National Cyber Security Center had detected 51.9 million threats compared to the past years. However, the most prominent cyber attacks in the country are false publication, computer fraud, computer hacking, money transfer fraud, and cyber terrorism. Cyber security in Kenya is governed by various provisions of law, including Article 31 of the Kenyan Constitution, the Kenya Information and Communication Act No. 2 of 1998 and the Computer Misuse and Crimes Act No. 5 of 2018 and the Data Protection Act No. 24 
of 2019. In the year 2019, uh, 25th of uh, November, that's when uh, the Cyber Security uh, Act law was enacted. And uh, in quick succession, they, cho uh, they chose the um, person who was supposed to be in charge and they called him the data commissioner. The government also came up with the Kenyan National Com uh, 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 Coordinating Commission that could uh, uh, handle the emergency response. It is like an emergency response team that is nationwide that could really be able to, 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 to respond to problems that happen uh, whenever there is a cyber attack or something that could have, uh, th there is an infringement of information. And uh, uh, looking into how they have drafted the laws, uh, you can go into the uh, Cyber Law and Security Act that was gazetted in 2018. And um, if you look to some of the how they have been drafted, basically they were saying like, for example, if you have uh, the minimum, the minimum uh, fee charges uh, is about 3 million. Uh, in, you, you know, if you do not allow the commissioner of data to do his investigations, you run an, a, a risk of being charged almost 50,000 US dollars, that's 5 million. And if you, uh, the general amount that was put into place by the committee that was, the steering committee, uh, is 3 million, that is the bar. And if there is any other issue that could emerge, like for example, if you use, for example, if you use the information without the prior knowledge of the person, they are charging you 50, they, they charge you 50,000. Looking into the act, if you look at like uh, part 3 act 14 uh, they say any person who wants to use the information without the consent of the person that is in ch uh, is, is, is the holder or the predecessor or the precursor of the information then you are liable to a 5 million charge or a 3 million uh, 5 million charge or a 10 years imprisonment or both you see, so that is, and even you look into 15, you know, if you disclose information without the prior consent of the person that is holding the information, you know, it creates, a, you, you, you are charged 10 years or, or, or a fine of up to 5 million shillings or you can suffer both, you get. And, uh, and, and other, other laws, this was to protect some cyber problems. Cyber security is therefore a major concern for many companies in Kenya and around the world. The key takeaway for companies and individuals is to never undervalue the importance of good cyber security practice. However, with the ongoing digitalization, people should be more aware and concerned of their right to privacy and protection of their data and technologies. Cyberbullying is basically manipulating someone's information through digital platforms such as you can find them. chatting platforms, social media platforms, gaming platforms. It's how you you share what information about someone, like invading his privacy, like sharing what information like uh, you can say revenge porn or something. And it's not once that um, an account has been hacked. Your account is hacked things that you do not uh, acknowledge or you do not even uh, subscribe to are posted there and your name is tarnished. I'm sorry I diverted a bit. But then it is dangerous for uh, especially the people who are new in this. They will be very hard. They may be, uh, their self-esteem will be tarnished, their self-awareness. And that is part of a whole person. For you to show up in a job well and in a good mental state, everything has to be standard or everything has to be in control but when your account is hacked and things that you do not even subscribe to are posted there it 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 tarnishes who you are it messes up with your whole being you can you can find like you have collided with someone then he doesn't have any other way to to return his uh, so he just use social media to criticize you because everybody everybody is on social media and so many people will get to know yeah, the, the coral. The power that mental health has on the way you, um, you are able to deliver is tremendous. And technology is where our mental health is really uh, not safe. Because, for example, in, in your physical day-to-day -day life, without your fault, you will associate with people uh, you know, your friends, your family, your colleagues. Yeah. But then when, for example, you post a photo and uh, 
bad comments for example twitter twitter is <laughs> crazy bad comments are there from people that don't even know you people that are from uh, from a certain part of the country you've never even been to but technology has brought you together but now it's uh, it's it's being used against you so your mental health you you can um, you can have mental illness just sitting in your house doing everything you do daily but just because someone said something on your phone or on your tab or your ipad then your mental health is is doomed it is just you're brought down to a pile of ashes apart from the law there have emerged non-governmental organizations which are trying to reach out to more audience with the gospel of cyber security awareness an example is the african hackathon founded by dr bright gameli mawodor she hacks kenya is another organization a community of women in cyber security from various backgrounds and counties in Kenya it was founded with the aim of providing women in cyber security a platform to interact and create awareness across the country now Tina Moreo is a member of Shiax community and was once hacked she will tell us more about Shiax community how it has helped to empower more women into the industry as well as how it is empowering people and making known of cyber threats here in the country she Hacks is a club. We do make sure that whenever there is an opportunity about cyber, cyber security, we get communications from the admins. We do share ideas there. Let's say someone is asking for a solution to something, yeah, people do share ideas there. The, the best of security measure is, uh, is this, what we call uh, two-step verification. So this two-step verification, is where once your account is logged in into a new device there will always be an alert or that particular person who logged in your account in a new device uh, will be told to add a particular code that was sent to your mobile phone or your email so by this since they do not have access to your email address or your phone number or, or maybe your your phone so that you can receive the message it will take another step for them to try to gain into your account and by the time they try to bypass that you will already have realized that there was an unauthorized login into your account. Okay, have you heard of something called as a VPN? A VPN is just uh, making your data private. When you are browsing through the internet you, you just secure it through a VPN. It's like an IP address in which you, you install in your computer that it's like encrypting how you use it. It's like encrypting the data you share to the internet. So no one can access it. So as you use the inter internet and you have a VPN, uh, it's like you are secure. No, no, no hacker can crack you. So if we create awareness on the use of VPN in people who use, the, who use computers most of the time, uh, that, that, that is a step in cyber cybersecurity. People should be able to follow the government. There is no government that would want to destroy its own citizens. Let people follow the protocols. Let people identify where are the commission's offices, who are the steering committees, what kind of, uh, you know, the, there is parliament, there is senate, you know, there is national assemblies and county assemblies, you know. They are, uh, the constitution itself has given people the mandate to petition, you know, through the national, through the county assemblies, down up to the national assembly, you know, and it, it can go up to the executive whereby it can be implemented, brought back to the parliament to be enacted. So the whole constitution of, the, of Kenya is an umbrella into these small, small bylaws. So people should not just base on the cyber security, they should also base on, because you look at the rights and, and the fundamental freedom of the country and you merge it closer into the cyber laws. It's almost the same, only that cyber laws is, uh, is targeting specific parts. So uh, I can say it's really important that people register uh, with the data commission, people understand, and I also ask the government to put some civic education because most of the people are getting into the systems today, you know. Creation of awareness and uh, uh, another, uh, another solution that would be very workable is 
making us able to access these psychologists because people are ill and they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. You know, the worst situation is trying to help someone who doesn't even know they have a problem. So psychologists at the moment in Kenya are a bit pricey and uh, it would be amazing if they would, uh, we would be able to get uh, psychologists to access, uh, we would be able to help youth access psychologists even online. That would be using technology for the right reason, helping someone out there, helping a great mind out there that is at stake. Yeah. Another thing is uh, use of password. You should, you should always ensure that uh, we use a strong password because uh, we have uh, hackers have found a way that they can be able to get your password without even knowing them. We call it cracking. So if you use a, a easy password, it will be easy for it to be cracked. So. Uh, most of the sites have been advising that we use passwords that have numbers, alphabets, characters, I don't know, symbols, and so that the password will be a bit hard for someone to try to guess. Every day is a technological miracle, and uh, with so many social media platforms, we continue to fall victims of cyber attacks and cyber threats. Now, whether or not we decide to continue supporting the groups that are trying to help us keep the enemy at bay. We should continue to implement solutions provided by experts. Reporting for Dark Web Documentary, my name is Paul Munio Kamau.